And there we are. Ben, how are you, mate? Really well, thanks. How are you getting on? Yes, absolutely super. Great to make your acquaintance. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. And off the bat, we've got to thank Susie, haven't we, for putting us in touch? We have. Yeah. Yeah, she made it happen. So thanks, Susie. Yes, thank you, Susie. Long term term support of the show, friend of mine, and also coming to our Bushcraft weekend, uh, which is next cool. month. <laughs> So awesome. thank, thank you, Susie. Ben, listen, I'm all ears, mate, because um, I really started on my kind of spiritual journey, you could say, about about eight years ago now. Mm-hmm. Although, although, obviously, the in, the whole journey is a lifetime, isn't it? Mm. Um, I kind of knew what enlightenment was or felt it in my own life, gosh, back in 1990 seven um but it wasn't until i started listening to a a chap called john st julian on youtube that things started to fall into place and i started to decode scripture and this kind of stuff and obviously meditation is a huge thing i think in in Mm -hmm. scripture it says there's nothing that can't be fixed through fasting and prayer and by prayer they 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 mean meditation obviously so yeah i'm all ears i'm gonna shush um (laughs) over to you you've very kindly gave me some bullet points How, how did you get into meditation at six yeah sounds a bit strange doesn't it it's not your usual starting age I was really lucky. My my dad was big into his martial arts, so he was he was getting into martial arts more, and he joined a local kung fu club of all things, which I think back then probably would have been quite a lot quite a lot more popular than they probably are now. But um, through going through that process, he ended up meeting who someone who became eventually my teacher as well, um, and. My dad started off, I suppose, on this kind of spiritual journey from that point on. He started getting interested in all of these kind of topics and reading up on Hinduism and Buddhism. And he was learning about meditation as a aspect of the martial arts, because obviously within sort of more Eastern martial arts, they they tend to combine meditation and and the the actual physical martial arts a lot more. It's more of a more of a thing. So he got into it through that and eventually became a teacher himself and just sort of taught locally just pe- just general people but his teacher was um you know we don't really use the term master it always sounds a little bit strange but he is someone that i would genuinely consider a master when it comes to meditation and um he as i said at the start he, he then became my teacher my dad introduced me to it when i was about six or seven uh, through the martial arts and then that became a practice that i took up outside of medit- outside of the martial arts so it it became a part of my life very early on and i was very much surrounded by all of the different books that my dad was reading and interested in and a lot of his friends at that time would you know if anyone ever came over there was often a lot of conversations about all of this sort of stuff so i was all ears and i was absorbing all of this i suppose and my dad was very good he was very open he was always sort of honest with me i think i felt that he would always say you know i'm learning all this stuff i've got a good feeling that it's what i'm learning is true and real but i don't want i don't want to ever force you into this because i could be totally wrong and i think i felt that i I never felt pushed so because he was so open and i think because i could see the changes that were happening in him i felt well yeah i'm gonna give it a go as well and there were a lot of inspiring other people who were sort of taking up the practice as well at that time who I was aware of through the martial arts. So I think it just, it just came about quite naturally. Um, and then as time went on, I sort of forgot about it as I got older. And especially when I got into the teenage years of, you know, the boozy chasing girls kind of era of everyone's life <laughs> that we all have. I had to very much put it to one side there, but it was, it was in the back burner. It was always in the back burner. So that that got me started. And I think by the time I'd got to that age of chasing girls and drinking loads, I had a, 
a lot of knowledge. I did ha I did know a lot because I'd been surrounded by it for so long and I'd been through lots of different phases trying different meditation techniques that my my teacher would put me on a technique for maybe six months or a year and I'd be working on that and then I'd move on to something else for a period and and um so I did have a good amount of practice and knowledge but then I sort of gave it all up and <laughs> ch chased all the things that everyone else chases and didn't revisit that again until my early 20s when I really picked it up and took it to the next level and really sort of made it more of a part of my life rather than just a box ticking exercise that I think it can become. So that was sort of my entry into it all. Yeah, you mentioned something quite important there, Ben. And you said your dad said, I don't know about this, but but I just know. If, yeah. And of course, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's gnosis, isn't it? That's a yeah gnosis as in knowing it's something we yeah. de develop by i don't know how you develop it but i can tell you something you've got to be incredibly open-minded and you've got to be willing to learn and listen to everything and obviously mm -hmm. then, then you know make your choices ac accordingly does that make sense yeah, I think so. It is really interesting, isn't it? So I always think of it, as you say there, like it is a remembering. It is very much a remembering. I, I tend to, I picked up this habit of getting more knowings about things, which is very, it's, it's, it was strange initially, but it is like a remembering. It's almost like, it's not like you're learning. It's like you've just remembered something you'd already, or always known, but you'd forgotten. And it's just like, oh, of course that makes sense. You know, of course that's the right thing to do. Or of course, you know, when I teach quite a lot, I'll often get these knowings. If I'm, if I'm teaching from a pure place, if I'm doing it for no self-interest, no, you know, I'm not doing it for anything, any sort of selfish reason. And I find myself quite aligned and I ask for guidance with whoever it is that I'm working with, I'll often get the answer and it will come as a knowing. And I'll just know that that's what they need. And, and nine times out of 10, if they do implement it, it does work. Um, but yeah, it, it's like a remembering almost. It's really strange. And also, there's there's a strong connection, isn't there, between martial arts and and esoterics? You know, mm. whether that be meditation. I think in China, the when the kind of the rebels were going up against the Chinese dynasties, at one point they took used to take refuge in the monasteries. And the fighters would teach the monks Kung Fu. Hmm. And I'm guessing that the monks taught the fighters meditation. So it's probably, uh, that, that's just, yeah, that's just sort of Shaolin Kung, Kung, yeah. Kung Fu stuff. It's a great mix, isn't it? Yes, yes. Mind and body. And of course, they're both ultimate disciplines aren't they i mean meditation is you have to be disciplined and that's something mm -hmm. i've not yet developed i'm terrible at at it <laughs> i think the reason i like going for a jog every morning is it's kind of like a meditative experience mm -hmm. that that i just do i just get it done i don't have to do the proverbial sitting in a dark room for an hour which i always find time to make that time but yeah but this is why we've got you on the show because i i want to learn from you how how do i do that um and um yeah i i don't think it's funny at all that you started to pick this up at six years old i think you've got a dad who was bloody great mm. um, and, and clearly yeah. clearly thought the world of you you know yeah yeah, I was very, very fortunate. I've actually started teaching a 10-year-old boy myself. His, his mum just contacted me out of the blue just on my website. They live quite locally to me, and I've started teaching him, and it's been like a real throwback. Try, I've almost been picking, I've almost been remembering some of the things that I was being told at that age that, that actually inspired me, trying to bring them into the conversations with this person and, and hope, hoping that it will inspire him. And, and it's amazing, actually, because I'm really... I'm really invested in his, in his progress. And I'm I'm like, you know, if you can stick with this in my head, I've not said this to him, but I'm thinking if you can stick with this, this could 
quite literally changed the course of your life. And it doesn't seem like it when you're sitting there following your breath for five minutes. It seems seems like it's a complete waste of time. But if you can follow your breath for five minutes for the next 10 years, that will change the course of your life because the self-awareness that you'll develop will be out of this league. You know, the the steadiness of mind will be much greater than probably people your age. The calmness that you'll have, the control, so many things that will come about and all you've got to do is follow your breath for five minutes. It seems just ridiculous, but, and it's a sliver of your day. You know, you've got 24 hours of the day, five minutes is nothing. You spend five minutes scrolling on your phone a hundred times throughout the day and it, and it benefits you not one iota, but five minutes of doing this will actually change a lot, but convincing people of that or showing them is, is often difficult. I spend two and a half hours a day on my phone. <laughs> me, probably me as well. <laughs> ben, it's awful. It's awful. I'm ashamed to say it. Mm. A lot of it, I you know, will hold my hand up and say, do a lot of research. So I'm, you know, flicking through websites, trying to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but then an awful lot of it must be sort of quick check. How did that Facebook post do? You know, yeah. how's that video doing on YouTube? And, and <clears throat> so for our friends at home and for me then, um, what is meditation to you, Ben? What, what are we trying to achieve here? It's a big question. From, I, I guess it varies from person to person. Some people will start because practical reasons. I, I want to de-stress. I've got a busy life. I want to de-stress. That to me is... There's nothing wrong with that, but that's like an entry into it. That's that's your spark in a way. That's the thing that's starting you off. To me, it's a connection with the divine. It's a connection with something much greater. Um, some people would say that that is, you, that is what and who you are already. Um, but for me, it's a connection with, some people would call it God. I tend to use the word the, the divine. And it's really about actually putting Ben aside for one moment and delving deeper and going beyond this physical body that I call me and this mind that I associate as being me beyond all the emotions that like to rear their heads and, and diving deeper and actually seeing what is, what is here. There's more to me. There's a lot more to, to this than just these other things that I'm experiencing. So for me, it is, it is a self inquiry. It is a deep dive into my own nature and trying to uncover more and more and experience more and more, which is the beauty of meditation. It's not just theoretical, it's actual direct experience, experiencing more and more of who I really am. And however many years I've been doing it now, that search still continues and deepens and broadens and my understanding broadens. And with that more questions come. So I'm always a student. I'm never, I've not reached the end, so to speak, but I'm very much every single day I'll sit down and I'll want to learn a little bit more. And I think the interest is huge. I think when meditation becomes, as I said earlier, like a box ticking thing, which sometimes it has to be because we can't always be super motivated, but some days you just have to think to yourself, I need to just do this today. But I think overall, a more, a stronger motivator is having this deep interest in I want to understand myself more. I don't know anything about me. These emotions keep coming up and, you know, one minute I'm angry, next minute I'm happy, next minute I'm jealous. These are all surface level things. They're, they're, they're not me. You know, all these thoughts that I have that I often associate as being me, they're not me. This body, you know, I could lose my arm tomorrow, I could lose a leg tomorrow. Which part of my body is me? Who knows? I, I want to go deeper and beyond all of those things and experience more. And to start with, that can sound ridiculous because you, you know, to to people that aren't used to this kind of terminology, this will sound absolutely ridiculous. But I, I can tell you for sure there is more because I have, I have, although I've not, I'm not suggesting I'm enlightened by any means. I'm learning all the time. I have gone beyond a lot of those things at times in meditation. So that then it becomes more of a motivator to go further and delve deeper and. Mm -hmm. You know, every you only have to search on YouTube people who have had meditation uh, experiences within meditation. It's infinite the amount of different experiences people tend to have, and so you know that there's something to it. And you only have to commit to it for three months, six months, 
every single day discipline yourself to do it every single day and you'll feel changes you'll you'll see the benefits you'll know that there's something more and one day you'll sit down and something will change something will will have shifted in you you'll feel a bit different you might have experienced something more you might have seen colors you might have had something and you'll think okay there's more to this i want to go further and it's that continual pursuit of i'm not going to stop until i know exactly who i am beyond all of this that's really for me what the meditation is about beyond all the like amazing practical benefits that we tend to get with it yeah there's a lot to cover here isn't there i mean you said i'm not claiming to be enlightened or, or words that i think you're being humble and I've had people say that to me, that you're not supposed to say that you're enlightened. And to which my reply is, well, if I'm a carpet fitter and I don't tell people I fit carpets, how, how am I supposed to get any work? <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, I think, I think this probably comes across as a bit hurtful to people that are in pain to say mm. that, to say that you're enlightened, but mm. I know that I'm enlightened because I, I, I know what I used to be like mm -hmm. and how I used to feel and what I thought the world was yeah, and how obsessively materialistic I was. And I think that the enlightenment point comes. And for me, it was an actual physical sensation, a physical, biological psychological spiritual thing that boom just it came at one time in my life when I Ben would say I literally saw saw the light mm -hmm. um and my life has never it's never you know it's never been the same since mm -hmm. fortunately I'm I'm never alone now do you know what I mean I've always got yeah. that beautiful energy with me saying that there's something bigger than this yeah and i think it's that as above so below thing once mm -hmm. you realize that you're not just the below bit that that you're the divine as well mm -hmm. then a lot of the petty strifes in life fall away don't they mm -hmm. yeah big time can yeah. we get on to then um what what's the actual practice because I, I i bet you get this a lot oh i try and do that ben but i fall asleep um <laughs> you know what how should we be setting ourselves up for this yeah i think the a big a big or a sort of an overlooked aspect of meditation is the fact that it is a it is a real discipline it's not something that you sh that i believe anyway you should just dabble with and just sort of dip your toe in you really want to commit to it and say to yourself, I'm going to properly do this. You wouldn't just dabble with a hundred mile ultra marathon. You wouldn't just say, I'll dip my toe in today and just see how this feels. You have to commit to it because it's a big, it's a long journey. It's a big, big event. And meditation, although it doesn't seem it, if you want to actually get somewhere with it, you have to really put in the effort and put in the work. And so seeing it in a slightly different light, I think shifts your mindset a bit more. So I take it, I, d I don't take it that seriously you know, when I'm with my students, I have to ease people in gently. But um, I think even having a space, having somewhere where you do it, that starts to change how you look at it. So rather than just doing it at your office desk or in bed before you go to sleep, they're quite casual locations or they're tied to something else that you're already doing. So I will, I've got like a little corner. It's nothing grand. It's just a, a corner space in the corner of a spare room. But when I go in there, my mindset is already already changing to I'm going into a, a meditation in a minute. So changing the location, having a particular area, it's like going to the gym. You know, a lot of people struggle training at home, but as soon as you, you put on an outfit, you put some music in, you go to a gym, often people find it a lot easier because the mindset shifted. They're no longer in the casual setting. So I think similar things with meditation always help. Having a proper asana, so I've got a, an online school and I teach all of this, but having a proper position, proper mudra, which is a hand position, this is all in a small way, in small ways, discipline in the body. 
And the whole process of meditation is really about taking back what is already yours. Um, so much of our, our life is consumed and dominated by our thinking or our senses. The senses very much dominate us, you know, overeating or watching porn or doing all these things that we probably know we need to knock on the head, but we've not got that control over the senses. The senses are running riot and meditation being a process of gaining more mastery over yourself, even sitting down and being like, right, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I've actually got a straight spine. I don't need to be un really uncomfortable, but I just need to be a bit more formal with this, having a hand position, breathing properly, breathing more from the belly. So all of these little intricacies are ways that you're starting to take back a little bit more control because you're take you're setting the intention with before you start meditating you're saying to yourself right I, i've decided how i'm going to see i've decided where i'm going to do this what time how i'm going to breathe and all of these little intricacies are you saying to yourself this is this is what i'm going to do now and you'll always have that inner voice that will say oh, i can't be asked let's just let's just get on facebook or instagram or let's just watch netflix or whatever it might be. There's always something way more interesting that you could be doing <laughs> that's going to try and lure you away. But you, I think you've got to be gradual. You've got to be steady, not setting a massive length of time, not saying, right, I'm going to meditate for an hour every day. That's good. You're going to run out of steam very quickly if you just start out and that's your kind of benchmark. Not being too fussy about the length of time and working from wherever you feel comfortable at the minute. So it might be that twice a week is really hard for you a minute there's no point in pushing that seven times a week you're just going to give up in two weeks so wherever you are work from that point and monitor it have a journal right start writing things down get interested get get excited about doing it make it more of a feature more of a thing in your life when it's more of a thing you're more mentally invested you're more invested in every way and you're more likely to commit to it and stick with it i think the biggest mistake people make is they don't invest enough energy into it. And so it's quite a casual thing. It's just, oh, I do five minutes before I go to bed, but because it's so casual, you just slip out of the routine. You're not fussed about it. I think that's a big thing. Ben, do you think that, I'm not trying to sound condescending here by any means, but do you, do you think that possibly people don't get it? And yeah, I, I say that because I completely get the concept of shutting out the bloody noise of the day because it 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 can drive you. It literally drives people to take their own lives, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's all awful, and I totally get that if you anchor yourself in the past, you're you're losing this beautiful present moment mm -hmm. with something that doesn't even exist. The past doesn't exist anymore, and nor mm -hmm. does the future. So we've got this beautiful time called the present. And even when the future gets here, when we've set our goals and stuff, it's still the present. <laughs> this yeah. is the this is the irony is is, you know, your goal comes and it's still the present. And I just wonder, I mean, I I want to come on to manifestation and also mm -hmm. the fact that like everything good. The, these processes seem to have been hijacked by the materialist that it's all for like you know what you can get out of it and the secret mm -hmm. and manifest abundant and all this sort of stuff but yeah, yeah i think at its bare minimum am i right in saying it's it's shutting out the noise it's shutting out the chatter of the day of your memories and making that beautiful connection with the divine in which you are everything. I mean, you are literally the, the whole shebang. You're, you're the all, the everything. You've been here since time immemorial. You'll be here till infinity. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And the quicker that you realize these things and start to practice in the field of energy, frequency, and vibration the more likely you are to drop this drag, dragging weight of the 3D realm mm -hmm. and start to ma manifest, I, I'm, I don't going to say abundance or anything, I'm just going to say balance, just, just 
you know, yeah. balance. Am I sort of in the right area? Definitely, I think so. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we experience everything we experience is through the mind, isn't it? And so if that is cluttered and chaotic and not under some balance, then every other thing that you go through in your life, everything you experience is going to reflect that. And so I think as you perfectly, you know, rightly pointed out, just getting to the point where you're comfortable, actually not needing anything, just even for 10 minutes. And that's that. I'm, I'm well aware that what I'm saying now sounds, some people will be listening to, listening to this and thinking, what the fuck is he on about? You know, what is he talking about? But if you, if you trust me, if you just for five minutes and trust what, you know, thousands of other people have also experienced for five, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, if you start to train yourself for that period of time to say, I can actually sit here and it doesn't need to be the breath. It can be whatever, but just as an example, you follow in the breath. I don't need, I don't need anything now. I don't need my phone. I don't need my partner. I don't need hobbies. I don't need interests. I don't need music. I don't need anything. All I'm doing is following this breath. And to start with, the mind will present you with a lot of agitation because it's not used to that. It's not happy with what you're doing. But when you can get to the point, and this might take three months, but you have to you have to persevere, the mind starts to subdue. And you can actually sit there for hours and be perfectly, perfectly at peace and content just just doing that, not needing anything outside of yourself because you've actually brought the mind into balance again rather than the mind being chaotic, which is basically what you were saying there. So yeah, yeah, it very much is about reminding yourself and almost retraining yourself to live in the very moment. And as you as you say, you know, so many of our troubles come from dragging up garbage from the past or worrying about things in the future. But what we're doing now, there's no, nothing, you know, none of that's going on. We don't have any need to be anxious or worried or stressed. We're just having a conversation. So when you can train yourself more and more to be in the moment, in whatever it is that you're doing, a lot of those problems drop away by virtue of the fact you're not focusing on them. Um, but in a more natural way, you're not having to consciously go, oh, I need to forget about that and do this. No, the mind is just more used to being in the moment because you've trained it to be like that. So, yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. Mate, I think you're a great instructor. You, you've got a really nice presence about you, Ben, you know. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I think when I'm not I'm not judging anybody here by any means, but I think if you was to be all like airy fairy and bells and jostics and, you know, mm. it, it it's i'm not saying that's the wrong approach but i think i think that you will really suit a lot of people um mm. yeah well i like to think i'm i'm one of everyone else you know i'm not although i've done meditation for a long time and that's quite unusual my day job is a heating engineer so although i'm basically full-time with meditation now for the last 15 years or whatever i was i've been a heating engineer so i'm used to hanging out with tradesmen and you know all of that uh, you know, I've done a lot of physical activity, endurance races and and things like that and Ironmans and, and all that sort of stuff. So I like to think that I'm, I'm, I am normal, you know, I'm totally normal. This is just a slightly unusual thing that I've added on to my life, I suppose, which is why I'm so keen to help people, to inspire people to do it more. I'm going to just correct you there, mate, because you are very humble, which is obviously a great quality, but I don't think it is unusual. I think that in our original state, when we lived in the forests, for example, I think we would have been in this state all the time. It was only when we got attacked by a predator, which might be, I don't know, let's say once a month or something, that we mm -hmm. had we went into flight or fight mode. And yeah. then when it was gone, we went back to har harmony and gathering our berries and our you know, and our leaves and our fruits. And and I think part of the reason the society wins against us is everything now is set up, you know, to keep you out of spirit, to keep you mm -hmm. chaotic, you know, to keep you addicted to online stuff, to keep you worrying about the mortgage, to keep you worrying about being late for work and the boss and da-da-da-da. And mm -hmm. I... I think it's um, 
I think absolutely the meditation is um, is the way forward. Let's talk then about manifestation and how, I mean, you know, what is it? I've heard varying things. I heard that if you tell the universe what it's going to do, you got more of a better outcome of it happening and you need to be specific, etc., not sort of vague, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to like pray into the universe, oh, please get me a mountain bike for Christmas. And that's, you know, so can you expand on this for us, Ben? Yeah, sure. Yeah, manifestation is an interesting one. To I suppose if I, if I was to keep it simple, it's what, what you're thinking about, you're constantly manifesting to some extent. Every single thought has the potential to manifest. And if you, you only have to look around the room to make that, to make that known, you know, even my phone that, that didn't just appear one day, someone thought about the thought of that, that started as a thought. And you can look at every material object. And at one point that would have started as a thought in someone's mind, then they've, then they've developed it and they've built on it. So yeah, every, every single thought has the potential to manifest. So you have to be very careful with your thoughts, which is, um, you know, one, one of the beauty, beautiful things about meditation is that you, these thoughts start to come at you in a much more manageable rate. And so you're not just constantly going and being drawn down paths that you don't necessarily want to in terms of what you're thinking about. So the thoughts are incredibly powerful. Um, it, when I was more interested, I suppose, in manifesting things. So let's say when I was, uh, when I used to do a lot more endurance racing i would sit down and i would watch myself doing the race i'd feel myself running across the finish line i would experience how that felt and i'd do it so many times that i just had a very strong feeling that that's how it was going to play out and often it would and so it from a basic manifestation point of view my approach has always been visualize the experience as if you've already done it as if it's yours um, feel how everything would feel, feel what the feet, what the ground feels like beneath your feet, the air you're breathing in, what's the weather like, what's going to all the minute details of how it's going to be and what the experience feels like. And you're actually then like the, the universe is like a genie. You're, you're like telling the genie and showing the genie what needs to unfold for you. That starts to come about for you through that process. So that's, that's a form of manifestation. Um, I do actually do a lot of prayer, but it's not so much in that I feel so powerless that I'm like begging the universe for anything. It's more because it continually helps me to establish and reconnect throughout the day. So I'm always reconnecting. And the other thing is, is that although we are powerful and we we all have this potential to create whatever we want, real danger with it is that often it expands our sense of I rather than reducing it. So often people will say, you know, I'm so amazing. I manifested this or I achieved that. Well, actually you didn't because even the breath that you're, you can't even sustain your body on your own. You know, you're not thinking about breathing most of the time. The heart's beating without you needing it to, without you needing to do anything. Your whole body's working without you doing a thing. So everything that you think that you've achieved yeah, you've put in some effort and some of you, you know, you've done half the work, but something else has done the other half and you're taking all the credit. So I try to give everything that I've achieved or as things are going along and some, some success comes my way, I will always thank some, what I call the divine as if it was given to me because it reduces my sense of I. And the more that I think, the more that I reduce that sense of Ben being real the more what i really am expands so every time the eye reduces what i consider love expands whereas if i'm constantly saying oh my youtube's doing great i'm so good at presenting everyone loves my videos i expands love reduces so this for me manifestation is more about actually understanding that you're although to some extent you are manifesting to another extent you're not there's something else helping you and you have to be humble enough to know that 
Otherwise, I think problems come your way. Here's something that I came up with. Tell me what you reckon to this. So, we're programmed from birth, aren't, aren't we, that we're, we're this individual, that, that we're also, you know, u- unique or whatever. Yeah. And when I'm sort of doing my life coaching and I'm talking about this, the sort of conversation we're having today, I'll say to people, where do you end? To which the reply is obviously, well, you know, my my skin. I, I, and I'm, I said, well, no, no, think about it. What are you breathing in your lungs? Air. Where does that air finish in your body? Oh, well, in my bloodstream. So, yes, so you are not just you. Immediately we establish your you and all the air on the planet. You are inextricably binded to to it mm-hmm. to the to the extent that all the air on the planet is a part of both me and you, Ben, as we sit here mm-hmm. now. And then we take that one step further. What's the air made up of? Well, one of the components is water, isn't it? So we're we're bound to all the air on the planet and all all the clouds and all when they precipitate into rivers. So so we're not just Ben and Chris. We are now, you know, all of the nature. And that air, wh- where is it going? When it comes out of our body, is, is it carbon dioxide? It's getting breathed in by that tree over there and that tree mm-hmm. over there and that plant. Up. So now we are an inextricably part of, oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, literally yeah. interconnected with with everything. Yeah, um, yeah fascinating. Which is it, impossible. It's so so hard to comprehend, isn't it? Because even when you think of it like that for a second, you can you can just about partially wrap your head around it, and then it's gone. And then then you then you very quickly, if you're not careful anyway, caught in I again. And caught in the needs of the individual which is always going to be there to some extent because you know we have an ego we have that sense of i for a reason as you say fight or flight um so there's nothing necessarily wrong with that but the reconnection and re the, the the sort of um tapping into the experience more of that universal energy i suppose you could call it that sense of everything that's that's something that you'll experience more and more through things like meditation and i'm sure there's many other practices out there as well that do the same thing do you think it's funny you sort of see a lot of kind of instagram adverts and that it's someone always offering some form of coaching or something that's going to improve your your life and a lot of this kind of coaching is linked to material isn't it a- accumulation of money basically <laughs> Yeah. And it's almost uh it's almost like it's a bit criminal because mm. what people are missing in their life is maybe not so much money, it's more being comfortable not having money. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really it's a really tricky one, that subject. I find I find it hard to articulate because I've been on both sides. I've been on both sides. So it's hard for me to say, well, you shouldn't go on that side because I feel like it might be a process people need to go through in a way to understand more. Mm. If I just jumped to this side, I don't know whether I would have understood it as fully, but I think, yeah, I mean, I went through the whole personally, the whole process of like wanting more, not so much materially, but in terms of status, I suppose. And like, being being known and think people having a high thought about you i suppose that was that was when in my early 20s what i was definitely was a driving factor in doing a lot of athletic things but with until i came to the other side of that and realized the folly of it i was i wouldn't have been able to just move over to the more um i suppose reducing that eye in a way and the, the more simplistic way of being I don't know if it would have come about for me. I needed that whole journey. So maybe some people almost need to experience something to realize it's not what they're after. 
But I think some some people then often get very attached to what it is that they're chasing and go down that whole rabbit hole. But I do feel like ultimately that stuff is is nonsense. You know, you, I think if you've got enough, you need money, obviously. We need money to live. We need to be comfortable. We need to have, be able to look after our family. And it's not about living in poverty. But I think we just try and shoot over the mark way too much. And I don't think that there's necessarily anything inherently wrong with that. If that's what someone wants, fair fair play, go for it. But from a more spiritual angle, you have to put in a lot of en- energy, mental energy, to to go beyond that and to to really live a you know a really flamboyant kind of lifestyle. And all of that energy, you could have directed into time inquiring, time understanding yourself, time getting comfortable with not needing things, which actually is a much better way of living in terms of your state of mind and feeling peaceful and things like that. So I think, I think with material things, it's more about the time and energy that it can take and that you have to spend to get to a certain level that people often aspire for, you know, millionaire and multimillionaire and things like that. Nothing wrong with that, but you need a lot of time and energy in most cases to get there. And is that time and energy is that the best way to spend that time and energy? Hmm. It's not for me to say, but personally, I wouldn't spend it that way. Yeah, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Because I, you know, as much as I'm sort of, sort of happy to live in a cardboard box, or let's just say I could live in a cardboard box. I mean, I have actually almost done that <laughs> when I was ho- homeless before. So I saw it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's also, I could have great fun racing a Porsche 911 turbo around <laughs> Silverstone, especially if I can bring it home and park it in my garage. I mean, I, I, yeah. I love quality. I love, en- you know, engineering and I love driving fast. Not that I sort mm-hmm. of do much of that at this age, but, you know, and, but I guess there's a, a question there is, if you go through the spiritual growth, then you can genuinely learn to appreciate stuff, perhaps, as opposed to just, I don't know. Do, I mean, it's that cliche, isn't it? The millionaire in a big, big country estate that mm. he's depressed and he's doing loads of drugs on his, you know, you know. Yeah. Where, whereas if I had a million dollar estate, I'd. I'd have a sauna house, I'd have a race yeah. track, I'd really be, you know... Living it, yeah, living it large. Yeah. I think what, what helped me to... I think what cleared things up for me and made me understand it more, this won't necessarily land for everyone, but for me it, it did land, was that I started to realise that all of these things, the Porsche, the Lamborghini, the house, amazing, I would, I would love them, but... If I find the source of all of those things, I I reach what is the components of everything already. And therefore, I don't need the toys that that is giving us, if you like. I've got everything because I've reached the divine. So for me, it's about it's about going so deep that in a sense, I is Ben is is no longer in its in it in the attachment to Ben. And I've merged back with everything. I don't care about the Lamborghini or or all of that because that is nothing but a manifestation of the divine anyway. So it's almost like um, it's a similar thing happens actually in meditation. Often people have experiences, so they might start seeing colors. They might start, start having visions and things when they're going into states of meditation. And it's a common trap that people will become attached to the, these experience experiences it becomes a ceiling then they don't go beyond it because they're so wrapped up in this particular experience they're having and all that experience is is a manifestation to some degree of what they're trying to get to what they're trying to understand more so the idea is that you enjoy it for for a period and then you push it to one side and you say i'm going to go further now i want to i want to know more now i want more and then you get to the next thing and then you push that aside and it's similar to what buddha went through when he sat by the tree and strived for enlightenment many demons came his way many uh, women trying to tempt him came his way 
And these are all little stories that are really metaphors to say how his own mind was trying to trick him and trying to cap him. But eventually he pursued and pushed all of these temptations and things to one side and continued until he reached his goal, what for him he described as enlightenment. And uh, I suppose in a way, earth can become like that. You can become wrapped up in the toys of the earth, which again is not inherently wrong, just means you're going to take a bit longer. Or you can say, okay, I've had my fun. I'm not so interested in these things now. I want more. And you move in a more spiritual way. And I think it's a it's a journey. It's not correct necessarily to say to everyone, you shouldn't chase this or that, because maybe that's part of their journey at the moment. Maybe they need to. Maybe that's all right for them. They're still gaining experience in life. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but from a personal point of view, it's, that stuff doesn't interest me anymore. I'm just seeking more beyond that. So I think everyone's in a different place. Yes. I think life's a sort of series of limited hangouts. Um, mm. I think the, probably the majority of the population get to that first limited hangout of soap operas and <laughs> nine, nine to five and fish and chips. And and, and I'm not criticising. I it, It's not a judgment at all. Just, just an ob, observation. Just and it is... Um, yeah, it's just interesting. I just find it fascinating. I find life, life, fascinating, especially when I look back and see where I was. Because you know, at one time I was that person that wouldn't miss a soap opera. <laughs> well, na- na- it was Neighbours, so it's kind of was kind of special when I was young. <laughs> it was this new Australian soap, and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was pretty cool. But um, let's move on then, because. Friends at home, I would utterly encourage you to learn more, uh, but you can do so. I'm going to put all the links for Ben's website and his um, socials, etc., below so you can get get hold of him. But it's not often I get the chance to chat to uh, an endurance athlete. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's one of my favourite subjects. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's great it's yeah time. I mean I came I to it quite late in life Ben despite going through the Marines when I was um, 18 mm-hmm. which you could argue is your sort of first introduction to endur- <laughs> ultra endurance um, it, it wasn't until I was 35 that I ran the London Marathon mm-hmm. And the whole thing about the London Marathon, it's an incredible experience, incredible day out. And obviously to cross the finish line, it was just, it was so amazing, especially to do it in the time that you really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. But equally, if not more, the thing that I'm most proud about and what I mostly got out of it was that I was running across Dartmoor in the rain and the sleet and the snow and thinking blooming hell Chris only you can push yourself only you no mm. nobody else you're not in the military I mean, no one else is making you get out here and do this no one made you put the application for, for, for the marathon or to I think I did it through a charity and I was like bloody hell I'm I'm doing it. I'm 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 going to do the London Marathon, and I'm I'm making my dream happen. And yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can. I don't know if that if that come if other people can understand. Yeah, yeah. That that you know. Yeah, it's um, it is interesting, isn't it? But you've done quite a lot of this stuff. What what? How did you get into? How many Ironmen have you done? I've done quite, so I used to like specialize in half Ironman, but I did do one long, hmm. but I did do one full. Um, but I, I remember it clear as day when I, it was when I was really young, I think I was probably about 12 or 13. And my dad had a friend who was, who'd come around for dinner and he was talking about some guy who he knew that was doing an Ironman. And I remember him talking about this person, like he was a superhero, just couldn't comprehend the distances he was doing. And 
and all of this. And I remember listening in and hearing how long everything was and being like, Jesus Christ, people can actually do that. People can actually cycle that far and then swim that far. I couldn't, I remember just like, that was the first time I'd ever heard that someone could do something like that. And I knew instantly that this was one of those knowing moments, actually. I knew instantly I was going to do one. I just didn't know how or when, but even at that age, I was just like, at some, some time in my life, I will do that. And I used to do a paper round before school and I'd imagine myself on the bike doing the Ironman. It's bizarre. But yeah, then when I was in my early 20s, I think when I was just coming out of this period of drinking and, and all of that, I was like, right, I need to get myself set. I need to get myself back in, back on, you know, on track. And so I signed up for a triathlon, bought a bike, didn't know how to swim. So started watching YouTube videos on, I could swim to keep myself afloat, but I couldn't properly swim front crawl or anything. So I started watching videos on how to do that. And, and then over the next like five or six years, I just got, got the bug as many people do and just, yeah, went, went pretty hard on it and, uh, did, or did, like GBH group stuff in triathlon, duathlon, um, raced in the nationals at half Ironman, did, did a full Ironman, the outlaw, um, did a few ultra, ultra marathons, 50 mile ultra marathons and things like that. Swim marathons did, did all sorts and got really into mountaineering as well. I uh, did, didn't do anything like ridiculously dangerous but just a lot within the alps mont blanc a couple of times wow. and around paradiso and uh climbed i actually read a book of a guy in the military uh an ex-sas guy called what's his name can't think of his name off the top of my head but he's got an amazing book and um i, w I read his book and was really inspired about it and it was basically about him he went to romania to the Transylvanian Alps. And it's one of the most wild places in Europe. It's still the most populated area in Europe with wild bears and wolves. There's like thousands of them. Can't remember how many thousands. I think it was something like two and a half thousand wolves. Um, but I was just really inspired by his story. He ended up having, getting hit by an avalanche and then crawling for like three days uh, until he got found, basically nearly died. But for some reason, I was quite inspired by it. So I went there and attempted to climb that mountain as well a few years later and didn't make it because the avalanches are awful in Romania and it's absolutely covered with avalanches. And even the locals were telling me not to climb. But I sort of got so far and, and just had a great few days adventuring around the Transylvanian Alps, climbing, it's called Moldovinu, the, the biggest mountain in Romania. Um, so yeah, it just I just went wild for a few years really. It's racing. sorry. Um, um, sorry, Ben, not being rude. I just was trying to get the, find the guy you're on about. I think he's called Ken Jones. Is he not? That's him. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. It's this, this chap here. He's got a picture of him wearing the climbing gear and it, you know, when you look at climbing gear, you can tell what era of climbing it yeah. was by the colors and the, and the, um, yeah, just, just a, he's got yeah. that retro style it's probably coming back into fashion yeah i've had um i've had uh nims die on the show oh yeah um, nims yeah, yeah. nims Amazing. yeah gurkha turned sbs who then climbed the world's 14 highest peaks in six months mm. but then i had Thanks. Kristin Har harilla on the show she's a sam sammy uh, girl, okay. girl from the north of Scandinavia. She climbed all fourteen peaks in, like, I think it was two months. <laughs> and um, I do remember now. Yeah, there was Nims just, you know, sort of riding the crest of the wave that that he'd cut six and a half years off the record. And then in no time at all, uh, you know. Um, this Someone young young it. young sammy woman comes and smashes it and uh, <laughs> it this is a, always a bit um how can you say this is one of those things about life ben that i i, I don't want to say it niggles me or or but or, or that i don't get it because i kind of do it's just that i get them guys on the show 
and I'd say to anybody seeking enlightenment or to to get a great experience in this life, I'd say watch those podcasts. Mm. You know, I'm chatting to a guy that climbed the 14 highest mountains, the classics, the Everest, you know, uh, K2, yeah. Annapurna, et cetera, et cetera. And he, he did it in six months and he rescued people while he was doing it. And then, and then Kristin came along and did the same thing and, and people die. And this is a, and, but, it's a funny old world, isn't it? That some people are just not interested in anything like yeah, like that, and they rather just watch conspiracy videos on YouTube. And not, not, yeah. I'm not judging, but I am saying all those people watching all these conspiracy, trying to desperately get some answers in life, and really, the gold is like just there. It's literally mm. by by your face. Yeah. Um. You just learn so much more from ex- from actually experiencing stuff, don't you? Yes. Just like get off your computer, get away from the screen and just actually go out and do something. Even if it's just your local bloody hill wherever you live, run up and down that 10 times. You'll learn more about yourself than you would yeah. with all these con- conspiracy videos and things. Every time I, I'm near water, doesn't matter what time of year, I've got to throw myself in it. Not, yeah. not because I'm stupid or I'm mental. Well, probably I'm a bit stupid and a bit mental, but... <laughs> But just because if you consistently just challenge yourself in little bits, and it is little, I mean, it's, it's cold, but that's yeah. all it is. And no one's going to, like, you know, stick a knife in you or anything or make you go and bloody watch EastEnders or something. It's mm. it's not that much of a punishment. Um, but it just adds something to your, to your life, Ben, doesn't it, these, these experiences? They enhance everything else as well, don't they? Like I, I always remember when we'd go, we'd go mountaineering, and you'd spend a couple of days sleeping in a tent and melting snow, and you know for your water and things. And then you'd come back down, and you'd be in your hotel or wherever, and your shower never felt so good. You know the the breakfast, the hot breakfast in the morning never tasted so good. Your bed never felt so good. So it really just uh, you take yourself away, you put yourself in a bit of an uncomfortable situation, which you always reflect on years later and say how good it was that you did that. And then everything for the next, you know, few weeks tastes and feels, and it is a lot more. It, it does enhance. It does enhance you, and it mm. all the character traits that you develop through doing that carry. You know, you need them; they carry you forward. So I think they are use. You know, they're without question useful. And I think everyone should, in their own way, find find ways of challenging themselves and push themselves. You do need to get the body fit and strong. You know. Yeah, definitely. Even just to go camping wherever locally or book into a campsite and have to yeah. cook, cook on gas for, for, for a few nights. It's, um, so I didn't know if you gather, but I'm rowing across the Atlantic in December. Incredible. Yeah, I just wanted Incredible. to ask you if you ever thought about doing such a thing. <laughs> I've, I've heard of it. I know, I know it as a, as a challenge and it's been on, it had been on my radar at some point. I'm so busy with what I'm doing now. And, and, the I suppose the messages that I'm sharing at the minute that I've had to park a lot of those things. So it's not something that's particularly on my radar at the moment, but I, I take my hat off to you. It's a bloody hard challenge and yeah, wish you all the best with it. Yes. I'd love to hear how you get on. Yes, you're very kind. You'd make an ideal. We, we've still got one more space on the boat. You'd make an ideal teammate. <laughs> I know that now. Um, it's kind of funny. Someone got upset with me in my comment section. And they they were being 100% genuine. They were like, mm. oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Just fuck off on a boat for three months <laughs> uh, when you're supposed to be fighting the new world order. <laughs> I was like, I thought it's quite sweet, sweet, sweet in a in a funny, you, you funny have sort. To laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to laugh. Yeah, I thought it was humbling that they put that much faith in me. <laughs> yeah, they've obviously they obviously expect a lot of you. Yes, yes. Ben, look, absolutely brilliant chat. Really, really good. And and please come on the show again. And and because mm. this this you can never you can never get enough of this stuff. I just feel 
really did you was it a film or a book said the incredible lightness of being or am i mixing up two titles there um i'm not sure actually I'm i just sure. noticed that the more you let the light come into your life through such practices like the meditation and you physically feel lighter you mm. you, you you know you go yeah for, you, it's true yeah you go for your run and you bloody fly around it's a, it's <laughs> it's amazing so yes yeah, so yeah please come back on the show again friends i've been showing you ben's um youtube channel look there we go uh, website etc we'll put all the links below i'd say if you're out there and you want to learn more take 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 a step and um contact ben is is that a good idea for them to do just to to, yeah. to find out about your services yeah, yeah. ben yeah i've got an online school so it's like um it's a hub where anyone around the world can basically join there's a there's um lots of courses in there i do live sessions all through the week um, there's all sorts it'll give anyone that's looking to get started and i'm not just saying it, it is a great place to learn and it's 15 dollars a month so it's cheap as chips so yeah it's a great great avenue for anyone that's looking to learn absolutely absolutely okay so ben massive thank you once again to all, all our friends out there thank you for tuning in for another another episode of bought the t-shirt podcast as usual i've got to um remind you to like and subscribe and click the notification bell if indeed you did like and may i say a massive thank you to all of our patreons our local supporters and our youtube channel members catch you soon folks <laughs>